your business should be designed so that people don't just have to go into that high ticket one-on-one offer because not all people are able to do that. So having price points lower down the totem pole is really helpful for people to be able to learn from you still. So stepping off my high horse. Welcome to the Life Coach Baker podcast. I'm Nicole Baker, life coach for perfectionists who want to set goals and actually follow through with them. I went to my first personal development seminar at the age of one. Yes, I was quite literally born into this industry. But by 15, I started to implement this mindset mumbo jumbo I'd heard so much about and it worked. As a recovering perfectionist myself, I've been able to set goals that are way out of my comfort zone and achieve them by doing things imperfectly, without self-judgment, and without the fear of their opinions. And now I help others to do the same. So if you are capital D done feeling like a hostage to this a-hole called perfectionism, then this show is for you. My goal is for you to leave each episode with tactical action steps that you can start to implement in your life now. I may be in my 20s. I may have the voice of a sassier Cinderella, but I've been doing this personal development-ish since I was a toddler. So let's dive in. What is up, sweet friends? Welcome back to another episode of the Life Coach Baker podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about how to create a course and more specifically, the making of the course that I just most recently did called Get Productive. This is the, as I'm recording this, this is the closing week of Get Productive, and it is really and truly been one of the most incredible experiences of my coaching life. These 14 women have been rock stars. I mean, just like absolutely diving into the material, absolutely giving this their all. And to see them blossom over the past six weeks has been one of the most amazing experiences of my life. And truth be told, a long, 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 long time ago, I opened up a question to my email list saying like, hey, what do you guys want to hear on the Life Coach Baker podcast? I really want to hear some, some ideas. I want to hear what you guys want to hear. And I got, I I was overwhelmed in the most beautiful way by the amount of responses we got. That was like absolutely one of the coolest moments of this, this job I've done, especially with the podcast. And one of them that really stuck out to me at the time was how do an episode on how to make a course. And at the time I was kind of nervous to do it because I was like, I had only made goal smasher. It was my very first course. And to be honest, for a first course, it was a really big success But I didn't feel quite yet like, do I have a framework? Do I have something where I could like talk about what that looked like? And a a little bit of perfectionism came up if I'm being honest. And I wanted to sit with it for a minute. And now I'm five courses roughly later. And it's become such a regular stream of revenue in my business. It's become something that I love doing. I absolutely love doing. So I figured it was time to just rip the bandaid off and do a whole episode devoted to how to create a course. What's the framework I use now that I've done, you know, five or six under my belt. Uh, what are the tools I use? Because I know when I was first starting, one of the things that overwhelmed me the most and honestly almost procrastinated, I procrastinated on so, for so long was because I didn't know what to do use. I didn't know what the tools of the trade were. I didn't know like how to figure that out. And to be honest, rather than just doing a damn Google search, I just like sat on it for a while. Goal Smasher was in my head for two or three years before I finally pressed record and recorded that course. Um, For contrast, Goal Smasher, or not Goal Smasher, uh, Get Productive was in my head for roughly six weeks. I've been practicing these tools for four years, but it was in my head of like, what if we did this? Like, what if this is an idea for just a few weeks? And I talked to a few people about it. And finally, I talked to one of my friends who's actually been on the podcast before Amber Alexis. And she basically told me, shut up and do it. (laughs) We all need friends who, who are like that. Right. Um, So I wanted to talk about the tools that I use. And then last but not least, what I wish I'd known when I first started creating courses. And maybe this, for those of you who want to also create some courses, this is going to hopefully help you jump a few steps and and actually 
feel like you know what you're doing. I know that when I first started, I had a coach, thank God. So she really, really, really helped me put it into motion. And I still felt like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? And my coach was amazing. Like, don't get me wrong. I still felt like, oh, how do I do this? How do I do this? Because I was just so in my own head. So I want to start with what, how do you, how do I create a course? How from start to finish, do I not only do the background work? Do I come up with concepts? Do I create the modules? Do I market? Do I get some people in the door? How do I go from there? This thing does not exist to people are using it and enjoying it. The first thing I do all the time, and I'm doing this 24 seven, I'm doing this literally right now. I listen to my audience so often we feel like, okay, I have to create a course. I have to create a course. I have to create a course. Ask your audience what they want to learn about. Polls on Instagram are a phenomenal resource for this thing. Hey, what are you struggling with? A, B, C, or D? And then based off those answers, you know, okay, most people are struggling with um, feeling like they're stuck in toxic productivity and they don't know how to rest. Man, I should really address that subject. This is literally what I did with Get Productive. I didn't do so much as the, the Instagram poll. I did more like I talked to my people. I talked to my friends who I would consider very much up my alley of clients. Like I talked to um, my actual clients. I talked to people who I actually coach. Like, hey, like of these things that you're that you're going through right now or that you came through when you were you were um you and I started coaching together, what would you say was the biggest one? And overwhelmingly so, this idea of toxic productivity came up. And I'd seen it in discovery call after discovery call after discovery call. So I'm very fortunate that I have an audience that I'm able to pull from right now. If your audience is a little smaller, that's still okay. Instead of maybe doing an Instagram poll, talk to people one-on-one, send them a message, send them an email saying, Hey, I'm really excited to be growing my business. I'm really excited to be doing more things in my business. And part of that is I want to create a course. I want to create a program that really is directed towards what you need to hear. What do you want to hear about a B or C? I don't recommend making it an open-ended question because people tend to get overwhelmed by that and then not really respond. We want to make it really easy for them to respond. But this is always where I start with. What are you struggling with? For Goal Smasher, it was, I am procrastinating on my goals. And I said, okay, how can I make it so you have the tools where you do not ever have to procrastinate again? And Goal Smasher was born. Um, After that, after I have a pretty clear idea of what they're struggling with, I whip out a journal or whip out a Google doc. And I start with the question, what transformation do I want to provide? Basically, what is the end result I want people to experience after this program? So for Get Productive, it was, I want them to have a healthy relationship with rest. I want to feel like they're in control of their schedule and they're not frantic and drowning all the time. I want to feel like they are, um, have a schedule that makes them feel really confident and supported. I wanted them to feel like they knew what to work on on a day-to-day basis, depending on their goal. That was like week two. And to be honest, in, at least in, in my experience of seeing people go through the program, week two has been one of the biggest ahas. It was, it was all about Pareto's principle and it was fucking stellar. So I look at, okay, what is the transformation I want to provide? Mainly the big, big, big umbrella version of it was I want people to feel like they are confidently productive. I want them to feel like a fucking badass when it comes to getting shit done and not like they're drowning. So then I asked them or asked my my Google doc really, okay, that's where they want to go. Where are they right now? what are they struggling with? They feel like they don't know um, what to work on. They feel like their to-do list is a mile long and it's choking them basically. They feel like if they rest, then they're lazy. They feel like if they um, uh, don't do, if they're not working 24 seven, then they're not doing enough. Like just all these different things of like where they currently are right now, what would they come into this program with? So now I have, okay, where are they now? Where do I want to take them or where do they want to go? 
So then I asked myself, what are the biggest steps towards getting to that transformation? If we're trying to get from A to B, what are the little micro steps or the big, the, the big modules, really, this turns into my modules. What are the big steps that take them from there to there? Okay. Reframing rest was a big one. Um, defining what productivity really does mean to them. And so they know, oh my God, this is why it feels so toxic for me right now, because my definition of being productive is insane. Um, I knew that I wanted to teach them, like I said, Pareto's principle, flow state, because so many of us just expect flow state to like bestow upon us. We don't realize that there's an actual strategy for getting into it. I wanted them to know, okay, I know that on the road to being really confident and in control of your own productivity and, and schedule, you have to have a schedule. You cannot wake up on Monday morning with the whole week's worth of to-dos weighing on your shoulders. It drives you insane. So having those day-to-day, -day, like I know this Monday I'm doing this, this Tuesday I'm doing that, blah, blah, blah. And obviously gearing that towards each person. But when I started mapping these out, I saw so clearly, okay, that's module one, that's module two. Ooh, I need to build off of that to be to module four. Like you can really see how those things worked. With Goal Smasher, I used a framework that I've been using and that I learned from my many, many years of studying goal setting science. I used that framework and I just geared it towards perfectionism and I geared it towards how my spin on it has really taken, taken a, taken a hit. Like I, I really looked at how, what I do with that and how to gear it towards perfectionist. Now I'll go ahead and tell you guys, I'm going to peek behind the curtain a little bit. I am actually going to be redoing Goal Smasher very soon. It's going to be the same concepts. It's just going to be taught a little bit differently and I'm making it a little bit longer because one of the things that I realized was missing was there's all this stuff about like, okay, here's the strategy, here's the strategy, but there's nothing about the goal smasher attitude. And I really want to throw that in there. So just, there you go. There's a little peek behind the curtain that's being added probably at some point this year. So for goal smasher, I knew their end result was I wanted them to feel confident and know exactly how to achieve their goals. Not all the steps, don't get me wrong, but the strategy behind how to achieve any goal. That was wildly important to me. I knew they were coming into the program feeling overwhelmed, feeling like they were chasing too many goals, feeling like they were procrastinating and beating themselves up for procrastinating all the time. So that was the two A to B. Then I looked at what are the steps? Okay, they need to know what their goal is and have one. <laughs> like, <laughs> a little side note. Uh, I think I mentioned this in my Nicole's favorite things episode, but I have a pair, I'd have an app with my partner called paired. And every single night we answer a question about anything under the sun. It could be truly anything. And one of the questions recently was describe your partner's job in four words. And his was do one thing, damn it. <laughs> So I thought that was really funny. That was his description of my job is do one thing, damn it. Um, anyway, so I knew, okay, you need to know what your goal is and have one goal that you're going after, not 50 because 50 equals overwhelm and overwhelm equals paralyzed. So not, not doing that. Then I need, then you needed to know, okay, how the hell am I going to go after this? And that really boiled down to stop doing all the shit that doesn't matter and stop doing the things that are actually going to leap you forward. Then we looked into motivation because here's the kicker. You can know the what, you can know what you're doing. You can know how you're going to go after it. But if you come to a roadblock and your mental capacity is programmed to say, Ooh, roadblock, I'm out, I'm done that motivation will not carry you through unless you condition it. So that was really a big one. And I knew that I wanted to build on the first two before I got to motivation, because that one tends to be a little bit more harder for us to wrap our mind around. It's more abstract. It's not tactical. It's not something you can write on a to-do list. So I knew I wanted to have that after we kind of built the, the foundation of the house a little bit. So I also have another course. It's called Unsubscribing from Perfectionism. And there's little mini courses within that course. 
um, based off of what your type of perfectionist is. If you've taken the what type of perfectionist are you quiz, odds are you might have either gained access to the course or you bought it or anything like that. It's seven bucks. They're super short. They're like six minutes, but they're wildly powerful. And they're like that first big tool that you need to learn in order to get to uncome overcoming, there you go, your type of perfectionism. And I decided to pack them all together because I knew some people were like, hey, I'm all three types. I want to be able to have access to all three of these. So I packaged them all together and made it like 19 bucks. So it's even cheaper than if you bought them all three separately. Um, so that one was a little bit different since it was a mini course. It wasn't quite in depth. It wasn't like a six week or two month long course. Um, with unsubscribing from perfectionism, I said, okay, they're coming in as this type of perfectionist. We need to get them to the first step of overcoming that specific type. And the modules were a little bit shorter, but they were really, really, really beefy. So it was really, it was fun to kind of twist that framework a little bit when it came to that mini course. Now, this is all just background. <laughs> this is all just stuff that I'm doing over the course of a few weeks or even a month um, to really understand what is the direction I want this course to go in. And I cannot tell you how imperative this background time is, and it is not something to be rushed. Um, I, when I first did Goal Smasher, I did kind of rush the beginning of this and I paid the price for it later. I felt like, oh, this doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I had to go back to the drawing board a lot. And that's spoiler alert. This is something that I wish I had done differently. Like I really had to go back and go back and go back with Get Productive. I spent oodles of time up front, really getting into the nitty gritty of these exact questions. And because of it, this has been one of the smoothest, easiest, most, most fun experiences of my entire career. So after I've done all the, what we're going to do, what's the modules, what's the transformation, where are they now, all that kind of stuff. I dive into the language around this particular person. So what is this person wanting? How would they describe their transformation? Because it's probably not, I would reorganize all my neural pathways to be so, you know, whatever. They're probably saying, I would get shit done. I would finish my to-do list and pat myself on the back and feel proud for once. They probably say something more like that. Now I have been this person. So it was easy for me to tap into both of the goal smasher persona and the get productive persona. But I also talk to people. I get proof of concept. I talk to my clients who came to me with these types of feelings. I say, what were some like words that you would use to describe what you wanted? Or what were some words you used to describe where you were? I would talk to friends who are very much in these patterns or have been in these patterns before. I would, this is one of the most genius hacks I've ever learned. I would go on to Amazon books and I would look up books about these specific topics. So let's use, um, let's use get productive, for example, because there's so many books on productivity. I go to a book like Productivity is for Robots by Corey McComb, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And I would read the reviews from people. And what they say is, I came to this book feeling X, Y, and Z. Now I feel X, Y, and Z. That is your language right there. And this is not just with courses. Use this with anything you are marketing. Because if you're talking to a specific person, and more importantly, if you're using their language, it is a game changer because they feel heard. They feel like you're talking directly to them. And me as a communicator, as the coach, as the, as the mentor, guide, teacher, that is so important to me because what I'm doing then is I'm penetrating that to that um, subconscious nervous system. And I'm able to really tap into that deeper meaning. And so we're able to create a bigger transformation up front because I'm using their language. I cannot stress the importance of this. And it's really fun to go onto um, Amazon books or even onto YouTube or onto YouTube comments or onto Instagram, looking at other people who are doing similar things. What are some things that they've said? Um, do your research here. I really, I can't, again, I cannot stress the importance of it. I did not do this as much upfront with Goal Smasher and it took me 
so long and it was so frustrating to create the marketing materials, even though I knew this person inside and out, I hadn't written down and become aware of what the language or the usage of the words that they would use were. And it, it really made things a lot harder because I use this language. I turn it into my personal invite emails. I turn it into my sales page. I turn it into everything I use for marketing ever. And it makes my life so much easier because if I'm able to talk directly to a person that I know is experiencing this and I'm able to, again, penetrate right down to that um, subconscious belief system, they get a bigger transformation out of this. You are helping people way more if you're using their language, just saying. So that's a little bit more of the background stuff. That's kind of the like, okay, transitioning into what we're creating. So here is where get productive and unsubscribing from perfectionism and goal smasher, those two courses and then get productive. They went a little bit differently since get productive was filmed as we were going through the live program, I did things a little bit differently. So I'm going to lean more into how I did goal smasher and unsubscribing from perfectionism because they were more film everything up front and then present people with an evergreen course versus unsubscribing from, or excuse me, versus goal smasher. There's so many programs <laughs> versus get productive. There we go. Versus get productive, which was a six week live program. And I just filmed each of the modules as we went through the six weeks. I will talk more about that later. But what I did with Goal Smasher and Unsubscribing from Perfectionism is I, from now having the transformation, the modules, knowing what the order of the modules was, having the language, having the proofs of concepts, I would then go in and just start writing the scripts. So for, for instance, Unsubscribing from Perfectionism, I started with the Overachiever, the Overachiever mini course first, because that's one that I... First of all, I am an overachiever type of perfectionist is one that is very much in my blood and bones. So I knew it was going to be the easiest one to write. So I wrote the script. I wrote the script for the procrastinator. And then I wrote the script for the people pleaser. Then I went back through and edited the crap out of them because they, they needed some TLC. Then I went through and actually before even filming, I would make the worksheets that way, when I am filming and I say, go to page two and answer this question, I have the exact wording from the worksheet. I just found it, it's a lot easier for people to really stay on track and stay in the, in the course when you're using the exact same language of the questions from the worksheet. Then I film the damn thing. I go through, I film it. We go do, 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 film, 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 edit, record, all that good stuff. Then I edit the videos. By the way, the making of the worksheets and the editing are things that I am delegating going forward. That is something where I'm, I'm very fortunate to be able to do that in my business now going forward. Um, with Goal Smasher and the, the past few ones, I didn't want to do that. I was still kind of getting the stuff under my belt. So I wanted to keep that under, under my in-house stuff. But going forward, I now know what I'm doing. So I feel comfortable delegating that task. I edit them and then I upload them to my course platform. Da -da! That's it. That is the course. It is done. Way easier said than done, really, though. Um, then I start marketing the course. I will, um, depending on really who it's for, um, my marketing platform or my marketing strategy does shift, as should everyone's, <laughs> definitely. Um, for example, for Goal Smasher, I would go on podcasts that were specifically geared towards my audience. So high achievers, people who really wanted to go after their goals, but were getting in their own way. Um, those people who had so many goals that they wanted that they were actually procrastinating on them. I would go on podcasts specifically, and I would talk about this framework and I would talk about, Hey, I have a course. It's called goal smasher. I really recommend checking it out. Go to lifecoachbaker.com forward slash goal smasher to learn more, blah, blah, blah. And it worked. That was really helpful getting people not only in the door of the programs, but in the door into my community. I have some people who heard me on those podcasts who went into Goal Smasher, who are now my private clients. They kind of like did that natural progression and they are amazing. Um, I would also reach out specifically to people <clears throat> who I knew were a good fit. If these were people who were totally kicking ass on their goals I didn't reach out to them because Goal Smasher was not for them. But if it was someone who I knew we'd done a discovery call previously, 
who was procrastinating and they're really getting in their own way. And maybe one-on-one -on -one coaching wasn't feasible for them financially at the time. I would be like, Hey, this is a really good introduction to one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I really think it would help you with a lot of those problems we talked about on the discovery call. I would check it out. And those were some of the first people who bought Goal Smasher and they totally kicked ass in it. Literally amazing people. I would also talk about it on my podcast. I would also talk about it on Instagram, on my emails. I would have an email sequence all devoted to it. For unsubscribing from perfectionism, it was a little bit different since this is kind of like a standing low cost entry point into my business. I wanted people to have more access to it from the quiz. So now what people get is when you take the quiz, um, what type of perfectionist are you? You now get, hey, do you want to learn the major points of how to overcome your perfectionist type? Here's a mini course. It's $7. And I will say this, I knew for a while I wanted to have like a lower entry point for people to get some, some information right away on how to overcome their perfectionist type. That was a goal of mine in my, in my business for a long time. That wasn't a high investment. I am very well aware, because I've also been here before, that some people do not have thousands of dollars to spend on one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's okay. That doesn't mean you're supposed to be like, denied this information. So I have these courses available, depending on your perfectionist type for $7 so that people could get this information and start utilizing it right away. Then what I've realized is now I'll open up my email during my email hours during the day and I'll have, Hey, this person bought this course. Hey, this person bought this course. Hey, this person bought this course. It has become now such a steady, slow, and the foundation of revenue for me, it's just kind of that, like, no matter what, and it's really helped my money mindset to say, no matter what, every week I make money in my business, even if it's $7, but no matter what I ever, every week I make money in my business. And I felt a major energetic change from that. So especially if you're in your the space in your business where you have that high ticket offer, maybe it's that one-on-one -on -one service, or maybe it's a higher course, or maybe it's a really beautiful painting, something like that. What's a lower entry point? By the way, this is, um, oh my gosh, what is this called? I'm totally forgetting, but it's a business term. I've totally forgotten for a second. Um, but I really, it's, it's almost like your business should be designed so that people don't just have to go into that high ticket one-on-one -on -one offer because not all people are able to do that. So having price points lower down the totem pole is really helpful for people to be able to learn from you still. So stepping off my high horse. So for unsubscribing from perfectionism, I made the scripts, I rewrote the scripts, I made the worksheets, I filmed them, I edited them, then I uploaded them to my course platform. Then all I did was mention them a few times on the podcast. I mentioned them a few times on my Instagram, and then I put them on the landing page for what your result was for your perfectionist type. Then I have a workflow email that has it dribbled in a few times in there, but that's really it. It's not something I super heavily marketed um, and that's okay. I kind of wanted that to be a little bit more of like a standing opportunity um, rather than something I heavily marketed at the beginning. So again, we're going to get into, or actually we're going to get into it right now. Wow. How Get Productive was a little bit different um, than Goal Smasher and I'm subscribing from perfectionism because like I mentioned earlier, I didn't film all the courses or film all the modules, upload them to the platform, market the crap out of the thing, and then get people in the program. I built the plane while we were in the air. And I cannot tell you how much I loved doing it this way. So what I did is I got extremely clear, like I mentioned earlier, on what the modules were, who this was for, what the transformation was we were going to provide. And I started reaching out to people saying, hey, I'm doing a beta course. It's called goals. Or it's, it's, I have so many G courses. It's called Get Productive. I'm really excited. It's for this type of person. I know based off of what we talked about, it would be really, really good for you. Would you be interested in joining it at the beta price? And people were like, hell yes, I would love this. 
And so as we went through the course, I filmed every single module the week before it would be dropped into their hands. So for example, uh, we're here in their week five. I just filmed week six yesterday, which is the final week. So I loved doing it this way because as I was going through the course with them, I was giving them, I was getting feedback from them, which when I was doing goal smashers specifically, because that was a longer form course, I was really like on my own in my island. I was trying so hard to be like, okay, get in their head, get in their head, get in their head. But as I was going through Get Productive, we went through week one and people were like, oh my God, I love this. I love this. I'd really like to learn more about this. Can we try this next week? Blah, blah, blah. And I was able to add that into the modules. I was able to tweak them. So it was really using their language. So it was really geared towards where they were at in the course. And it was a game changer. I loved it. I ended up tweaking some things at the very end, actually as a result of getting that feedback for them. And it was, it was such a different experience. And I felt like it was a collaboration, even though they were the, the takers of the course, I felt like I was getting that feedback where I could really make it the best version that it possibly could have been. And it felt like I wasn't alone making it, which was such a special experience. And now I have all the six modules recorded. So when I were, when I market it again, which by the way, a lot of you have been asking when Get Productive is going to be um, offered again, which makes my heart swell. <laughs> let me tell you, um, it will be offered again. I will go ahead and let you know that um, probably closer towards the end of the year, beginning of January, 2023. But I'm so excited because the, the, incredible transformation these people have gone through is mind-blowing. Um, so that was a little bit different, but going forward with any new course I make, um, I'm definitely planning on filming it as we go through. Plus it's a lot less of that hunkered down work at the very beginning. And a lot of you all who would be listening to this episode are highly creative people. We need to be in community in order to be in that highly creative atmosphere. So having that around me was really, really, really special in the creation of this course. But now it's all filmed. So the next time we launch the six-week course, I don't have to film every single week and we get to just do the live calls and make it really, really fun. And I'm just, I'm so jazzed. So that is really the nitty gritty. That's, that's the whole shebang. Um, I realize I just threw so much information at you all, so please take this with a grain of salt. But um, I want to move into the tools that I use in my course creation. I'm very simple, I should say this. I know some people who use like very fancy cameras and have like go and uh, rent out spaces, and that's amazing. I'm probably going to get there at some point in my career, but right now it's just not the time, and I'm more than okay with that. What I use to host my courses on is a platform called Podia, P-O-D-I-A. Um, personally, I looked at also Teachable and Kajabi and a few others. I liked the, the user experience the most on Podia. It felt the most easy to use both as a creator and as a customer. Um, I didn't like the things that Teachable had to offer. I know some people who love it and no, no shots against it. It's just my personal opinion. Um, there were some things on it where, where I was wanting to go in my business. I don't think it made total sense with like overhead costs and all that kind of stuff. And then Kajabi, um, just almost felt like too much of like the Prada of this world. And I was like, you know what? Not really my jam. I have a website somewhere else. And that's the big thing about Kajabi is you can have your website hosted on them, but I had my website I designed it myself and I loved it and I didn't want to move it. So um, I would, it really depends on who you are and where you are in your business. So please take my recommendation with a grain of salt. Know that I would really recommend doing your own research, but I upload it onto Podia, which I love. I create all of my worksheets just using a Canva template that I created myself. It is my bread and butter. I use it for basically every course I create. Um, I film in my current office. We're actually about to move. So the next course I create will be a different location. Um, but I film in my office using literally zoom. 
the thing that you are watching, if you're watching YouTube right now or you're listening, this is the this is the thing I use. I use just Zoom and it's so easy. Um, and I use my podcasting mic also because I I'm kind of a freak about sound. I like the sound to sound, I like the sound to sound good. So um personally I like using that, but I know someone who has many, 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 many courses who uses the microphone on her laptop and calls it good. There is no like, ooh, production quality, fanciness, meh. You don't need to do that when you're first starting. I think the myth around that is so annoying. Um, if I'm presenting for a lesson, like for instance, one of the modules in Get Productive, I was going through how to create a weekly schedule for you all. And since it was a really heady concept, I did it myself. I went through the um, the exercise myself on camera as I was recording it. And so if I'm presenting in that way, I'll use Zoom recording and use like Canvas slides or something like that to make it really easy to see. Um, if I'm using a teleprompter, which I did for unsubscribing from perfectionism, since those were shorter courses, um, and I had everything written exactly how I wanted to speak it. So I use speak flow, S P E A K flow, um, for that. However, normally I'll just use a Google doc for my, for my outline and just kind of scroll through it as I'm talking. Cause I also want to have, you know, I'm a podcaster. I've been doing this for three years. I want to have that freedom to kind of derail if we need to, to explain a subject in more depth, depending on where we are in the course. Um, and sometimes the freedom to do that is harder to do using a teleprompter. Um, for editing, I just use iMovie. I'm very simple. I don't need the fanciness. In the past, I've done Final Cut Pro, but it was overwhelming. <laughs> I just got, I got too much where I was like, I don't, I do not want to invest the time into learning how to use this app. I know some people are like wizards at it. That's amazing. It's not my jam and it's not how I wanted to. It wasn't, it, in my opinion, it was not the best use of my time at the time. Um, and that's it, I believe, when I use tools. The biggest one is Podia because um, I know that was what was stumping me when I was first creating Goal Smasher. I was like, how, where do I host it? I don't know how to host it. The only one I know about is Kajabi and I don't know if I want to use that one. Like, and it was, it really like halted me, which is, I, I I'm looking back now and I'm like, oh my gosh, how interesting. It's so funny how after we've done something a few times and we look back and we're like, wow, I really got in my own way. <laughs> um, I think that's it in the future. Like I mentioned earlier in the future, I'm really looking forward to having like a crew or a filming crew and like having like a scouted location for it. But Right now, and I, I really want to highlight this, right now it's not needed for me and my business. I've talked to so many people on discovery calls or new clients who are like, I really want to create a course, but I don't have the money to hire a crew and I don't have the money to like go and, you know, rent out a space and make it look all nice and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, you don't need that. You do not need that. This lie that... You have to have the fancy setup and everything to be taken seriously as a creator is bull. I do not believe that you need that at all. And if anything, you're just letting perfectionism get in your way of helping other people. Yep, I went there. Sorry. Um, let's last but neat, neat least. Let's last. Wow. Let's last but not least. There we go. Dive into what I'd wish I'd known before I started. There is about a million and one things I'd wish I'd known. And most of them I've talked about so far. These are kind of just the, the leftovers. The biggest one is I wish with Goal Smasher, I'd calm the F down. And I, I really wish I didn't have that like urgency that it has to happen overnight. I really rushed the beginning of Goal Smasher because I wanted to get it done. I was so excited to finally be making a course. I'd gotten out of my procrastination. I was ready to dive in. I went straight into overachiever mode. And I really had to do a lot of backtracking later on because of my, my urgency at the very beginning. So I wish I'd calm the fuck down and I wish I had really let it marinate and I let it sit with me and I dissected into who that person in and out, who that was for and written it all down. 
Now I did this with goal, or excuse me, I did this with Get Productive. And there's a reason why that course was so much more fun for me to create than Goal Smasher. Don't get me wrong. Goal Smasher was still fun. I love the framework behind Goal Smasher. It's my bread and butter. I use it constantly, especially with my one-on-one clients. But it really and truly was not the best experience at the very beginning of filming because of how much stress I was under from feeling like I was 101 places at once. Um, Other things I wish I know, I kind of hinted at this earlier, but the production quality does not need to be expert level. It does not, it doesn't matter at all at the beginning. Um, When I was filming this wasn't get productive. Oh my God. There's too many G courses. I need to I need no more G courses in the life coach Baker LLC. Um, but when I was filming a video for, um, when I was being featured in authority magazine and thrive global, um, I was doing this video and I was like, okay, it's going to be like really high quality. It's going to be having like all these transitions and it's going to look so, I was being such a perfectionist about it which the article was about how to overcome perfectionism. I thought that was so ironic. Um, So I was like, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? And finally, I was just like, fuck it. Put a Zoom and go. Like, let's figure it out. And I, I really wish I had not put so much pressure on myself for that. And then it bled a little bit into Goal Smasher. Not too much, though. Nowhere near. Um, And that was pretty quickly eradicated unsubscribing from perfectionism I didn't feel it at all and will smatter too many g's and get productive it was not there in the slightest like I had zero qualms about the production quality because I was so focused on the material and to be honest it showed the people who came out of that course who are coming out of that course are really 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 using the information given and it's it's just so cool um examples I'd wish I'd given so, I mean, I I really did do it a lot in Goal Smasher and it continued on, but I didn't know how many examples were needed when you're making a course. When you're not there for immediate question asking for them to be like, hey, like, wait, can you explain that a little bit further? Or hey, like, wait, what does that mean in relation to my thing right here? When you're not at that available beck and call for them to ask those questions to, it is invaluable for you to have examples after examples after examples listed and in different categories. All talking towards the same person. Here's what I mean by that. Here's an example. Um, In goals or in get productive, um, I had people who were business owners. I had people who were freelancers. I had people who were uh, employees. And so when I was talking about, for instance, Pareto's principle, I wanted to make sure I was giving examples of 20% things that were, by the way, Pareto's principle is just the 80, 20 rule, just so you guys know. Um, I wanted to give examples of 20% things that were in the areas of freelance work, in the areas of being a CEO, in the areas of also being a employee and also being a human being. It was not specifically towards business owners or worker bees. It was towards, okay, what about your to-do list? How does that feel around you? How does it bleed into the other areas of your life, like your relationships, your family? So really covering my basis with those examples. And I've heard from multiple people going through the program and in Goal Smasher, because I did this a lot in Goal Smasher too, how, how helpful that was so that they could start seeing themselves and then they get to expand on it. And it, it was, it's really cool to see how much that helped them. And sometimes it meant a lot more work on my part, like making a whole other worksheet page just of examples. But to be honest, if it means my my participants are getting the information so much deeper, it is so worth it because they're investing their time and money into you. I want to make sure that they are getting every morsel out of this information as possible. Um, next up, things I wish I'd known when I first started. And this is something, again, I hinted at earlier. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Creating a creating a course, especially if you're doing all the work up front, like I did with Goal Smasher and unsubscribing from perfectionism, it is a lot of work to do that much work up front. 
So going forward now in my business, I'm wanting to delegate certain tasks to make this upfront work a lot easier, but also something that helped me continue through with all of these courses that I've done was they're evergreen now. In, unless I want to redo them, like I'm going to do with Goal Smasher, I don't have to touch them ever again. And people still get that information. I can still launch, get productive because it's a lot, it's meant to be a live group program, but I don't have to ever record the videos again, again, unless I want to. It is a lot of work up front. And I did not give myself the time to understand how much work that was up front with Goal Smasher. With Get Productive, I gave myself oodles of time. I let myself, I really created a marketing strategy that felt good to me, that didn't feel rushed, especially considering I was teaching a program all about how to get out of urgency. It was wildly important to me to really lean into those tools. So I never felt like I was in urgency in creating the program. And I think that's also why it went so well. I created that program and most of the days I was out by the pool at 2 p.m. It was awesome. <laughs> like, but I really leaned into a lot of those teachings. And I do this all the time in my in my business anyway, but especially in the making of Get Productive, I I really made sure I was leaning into that so that I didn't feel rushed or urgent. And that meant giving myself more weeks to get the stuff done. And I would not have it any other way. I would not do it any other way ever again. It was just, it was so wonderful. And a lot of us, when we are in that frantic state of urgency, get it done, get it done, get it done. We are, we're getting, we're getting into energetics guys, but we are lowering our frequency and we are not manifesting the people in the program, period. Now I was very fortunate with Goal Smasher. It still got to be a really awesome success. We had a lot of people join it. I was so excited, but it was a slow burn. It was kind of a slow starter. So keep in mind that your energy while you're creating the program bleeds into the marketing and who create and who um, buys it. Keep that in mind. There again, there is a reason why Get Productive was so incredibly successful. I well surpassed my goal for how many people I wanted in the program. And it was awesome. And the fact of the matter is, is because I was really, really leaning into, this is the person I want to be. This is the person I am because I've been conditioning it for so long. I want you guys to be here too. And my energy matched the level that they wanted to be when they left, when they left the program, because that's just who I am now in my business. And it was so fun to teach them that too. So please know that while yes, it is a lot of work, I highly recommend delegating if you are in a financial position to do so, but give yourself time. Don't rush it, please, <laughs> please, please, please. And then things I'd also known when I first started doing it live. Oh my God doing it live because getting that feedback is invaluable. Building the plane while you're in the air, which I know because I've talked to many, many, many perfectionists in my career. It's been four years of my life just talking to perfectionists in a professional setting, but that freaks out a lot of perfectionists. Building the plane in the air. No, I have to have it all done before I hit step one. And it's like, no, not with this really not with this. You can have the outline. Like I said, I create where they are. I know where they're going and I know exactly the steps on how to get there. Sometimes in a course, and I'm, I didn't do this with Get Productive really, but I'm, I'm never putting it off the table going forward. I can have those modules and say, okay, I have this, 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 and this, and this laid out. But if I'm halfway through the course and someone's like, hey, like I really, really, really want this. I have no shame in throwing in a bonus module or shifting it so um, half the next one is devoted to the thing that they were needing. You do you get to change things. It's not set in stone. And that's why I loved doing it live because then I was getting that feedback on what they wanted to hear, what they needed or what they needed more help in. And that completely crafted the last week for me, which was so fun to do. I just finished filming it and editing it yesterday. 
Um, so really and truly, I don't know if I'm ever going to fully film a course up front again, unless it's a mini course, like I'm subscribing from perfectionism, because that's just short and sweet. Um, powerful, don't get me wrong, but short and sweet. Um, but I think just having that was really, it was just invaluable. I don't know how else to say it. Um, that's it friends. This is a really heavy topic. And I know something that someone may be listening to this, maybe you got a lot out of it, but it's still a lot of other things to think about. Please know I'm here. This is what I coach people on. I actually have three clients who are in the process of creating and launching courses right now. So if you want to get more personalized one-on-one -on -one time with me on your specific course, send me an email, sign up for a discovery call. They are free 30 minutes. Yesterday, actually, I was on the discovery call with someone who is wanting to create a course. We went through the first four questions of what I just taught you. Where are they? What's the transformation? Where are they now? What are the modules to get there? She had her entire course outlined in a free 30 minute call. She's also freaking amazing. I'm so excited for her course to come out. It's going to be awesome. But please know that I'm so available here. So if you want to schedule one of those free 30 minute calls with me, you can go to lifecoachbaker.com forward slash discovery call. Super simple, very easy. But know that you're not alone here. You do not have to figure this out on your own. It's hard. And it's a lot of throwing spaghetti at the wall, really depending on who you're marketing to, who your audience is, what the platform of the course, is, not like where you're hosting it, but like, is it a course? Is it a program? Is it a... Um, filming live with people on it? Like, is it a masterclass setting? It's, these are all very different and they require different marketing strategies. Reach out to people, whether it's me, if you enjoyed this episode, we'd probably be a really good fit, but if it's me or someone else, I don't care, but please, please, please ask for help. You do not have to do this alone. Okay. Stepping off my high horse. Again, you can go to lifecoachbaker.com forward slash discovery call to sign up for your free 30 minute call with me, where we would just dive, 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 dive into this. So let's finish up with some quick segments, shall we? First and foremost, how was I a perfectionist this week? Um, I, I'm switching the title or I'm switching the, the prompt for this question from how was I imperfect this week? Cause I realized a lot of the times I was like, well, I was actually a perfectionist, but then I was saying how I'm imperfect. So I'm switching it up. How was I a perfectionist this week instead? So we're testing this out, friends. Um, <laughs> I wildly, the like, and the W, capital W, italicized bold the word wildly, overbooked my fiance and I for apartment tours this weekend. <laughs> um, we are moving. I'm so excited. We've been in kind of more of like a temporary housing situation for a while, for like over a year and moving to a whole new area in Denver. I'm so excited. So, so, so excited to explore this new place. And I think in my excitement, I um, went on to apartment bookings and just started like, oh, we'll sign up for a tour here. They have a tour here. We have 15 minutes in between places here and here and here. And five viewings back to back to back to back to back later. I have a very disturbed fiance who is nervous about getting fed. Um, we have a plan. We're going to bring a lot of power bars, not power bars, like protein bars. There we go. Um, do power bars still exist? I haven't seen them anywhere. Someone, someone let me know. Maybe I'll do a quick Google search, but we're going to bring a lot of food. We're going to have a lot of water with us and just kind of like power through, go, 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 go. But um, I definitely had some perfectionism and more, more just like slamming my foot on the gas um, come out. But we, we talked about it and we're like, okay, like we want to, we want to keep these viewings. We don't want to move them. That's totally fine. So what are we going to do to make sure we still have our recharge time over the weekend? And so that meant shifting some things around that in our normal routine of the weekend and making sure that Sunday is clear as the blue, blue sky. That is a day to do quite literally just nothing except for whatever our heart desires. And in moving that stuff around, it really, really made me, made, made me happy with the person I'm going to marry. It was awesome. Um, last but not least, a goal to celebrate. I'm, this is going to be so cryptic. I apologize. It's mostly just because I can't tell you guys what's happening right now. Um, but I will, I promise I am working 
on just some absolutely incredible things behind the scenes. And I don't say that to be like hair flip. I say that because I am truly inspired by the people I am working with, by the projects I'm working on, um, by the new people in my coaching programs. We just recently opened up three spots in my intensive um, for the month of August. And within 24 hours, all three spots were taken. I'm so jazzed with the people I'm working with this, this August. So it'll be so, so, so much fun. By the way, if you want to be on the wait list or on like the, the, in, I call it the insider list. If you want to be on the insider list where I let people know first and foremost, um, when I have future offerings or future upcoming promotions or discounts or anything like that, let me know. Ser send me an email at hello at lifecoachbaker.com. And every once in a while, I'll just slide into your inbox and say, hey, I'm just opened up three intensive spots. They're $300 off for the month of August. I'd love to offer you one. And you get to know first and foremost before I open it up to the podcast or open it up to my Instagram community. So if you want to be on that list, send me an email saying, Hey, I want to be on the insider list and I will make sure you get added. Um, but I'm really, really excited to see where the second half of this year takes, takes my business, takes me, takes my family. I'm, I'm, it really feels like things are, things are opening up and I'm, I'm very, very excited. So you, you all, I love you unbelievably amounts of love you. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Life Coach Baker podcast. Don't forget to go take the free quiz and find out what perfectionist type you are by visiting the link in the show notes or by going to lifecoachbaker.com forward slash quiz. Also take a moment to rate the podcast and write a review. It is the best way to get the word out there. Plus you'll get the chance of having your review read on the show. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.